Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph Parish. Forty days have passed since we celebrated the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. From the star of Bethlehem to the light that dispelled the darkness to the light of the nations, Jesus from every birth has been associated with light. This weekend we celebrate the feast of the presentation of the Lord, the blessed day when Jesus, the light of the world, was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph to a believing people. Since the mid-fifth century, because of the strong connection between the light and the Paschal mystery, churches throughout the world have blessed candles on this day. Today, in preparation and anticipation of the Easter Vigil, we will bless the candles that we will use to spread the light of Christ throughout the sacred space. Just as the deacon proclaims, Christ our light, and we respond, thanks be to God, Today, we also give thanks and praise to God as we again call to Christ to be our light. Christ be our light. Seated at the right hand of the 
humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh. So by your grace, we may be presented to you in minds made pure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For if he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie, he will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the years gone by. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pig pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in this child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you, can, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for our people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow, until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was preparing this week for our liturgy today, and as I read over the readings and, and looking over the different commentaries and interpretations, I was drawn to the similarities between Joseph and Mary going to the temple to fulfill the laws of their time and the practices and beliefs that we follow today. In our first reading from the prophet Malachi, we hear it said, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek. Once again, the prophets tell us what is to come. In this case, God sent John the Baptist to prepare the people of Jesus' coming. And we hear in our Gospel from Luke, Joseph and Mary bringing Jesus to the temple to present him to God. Today, we carried in, in procession, our Paschal candle, as well as the candles that we'll use on Holy Saturday, when from a single light, the new light of Christ will spread throughout this church and lighten our lives. That same light will be presented to our RCIA 
who will be baptized into the faith, becoming full and active members. These men and women baptized and confirmed on this night dedicate their lives to God, much like Joseph and Mary dedicated to Jesus. After they're baptized, they'll be handed a candle lit from that Paschal candle, the light of Christ, so that as they go on with their lives, the light they receive will be one that hopefully everyone that they come in contact with will see. For most of us, we weren't baptized as adults. We were baptized as infants brought to this church by our parents. And for those of us with children of our own, we presented our children for baptism. We dedicated their lives to God, the same as Joseph and Mary. After the priest and the deacon or the deacon baptized our children, we were given that light of Christ. A prayer was said, it said, receive the light of Christ. This light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child has been enlightened by Christ. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts. Does it end here? We hear at the end of Luke's Gospel today, when they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law, they went home to Nazareth. And Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. This is the model that we as parents are called to follow. To help our children grow strong. Not only physically, but more importantly, spiritually. As adults, while our children are growing and we're helping them, we have to continue to keep the light of Christ shining in our own lives. We have to continue through prayer and scripture to grow in our own spirituality, in our own faith. How effective can we be in teaching our children? What message are we telling them? Or truthfully, anyone else that we come in contact with, if what we say and what we do are the complete opposite. You and I are called to be prophets. You and I are called to be the modern day John the Baptist, one who leads other people closer to Jesus. This is part of our baptism. This is part of the promise that we made at the time of our children's baptism. The promise our parents made for us. To keep the light of Christ burning brightly. For many, this is an easy task. Has there ever been someone that you've met? Someone in your life that when you step back and you think about them, you come to realize just how good of a person they really are, that there's a genuine love within them, something about them that makes you want to spend more time around them. Is it possible? Could it be that they have Jesus in their soul? That they're living out their lives the way Jesus wants all of us to? When Joseph and Mary presented Jesus at the temple, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace. Because the Spirit had told him he would not die until he saw the Christ. And he saw and he believed. He saw a light revelation for all the Gentiles. Simeon recognized Jesus' greatness because he believed and that promises that God had made through the prophets. Now the question becomes this, are we being light to others around us? 
Do other people see Jesus in us as we go about our daily lives? Or do we put that light of Christ, that light that we're entrusted with, do we put it under that proverbial bushel basket and only let it out when we come to church? Do we live our lives putting others first? Do we hear or read about tragedies? People who've lost everything, possibly due to fires or tornadoes or other disasters. Do we feel anything or do we just ignore it? Do we reach out to help in some way? Do we bring food to a poor family or to a family who's just lost a loved one? Do we offer to pray with someone who really needs, really needs it right now? Or do we figure someone else will take care of it? There are many ways to let the light of Christ shine, to be the prophet that we're called to be. We don't have to preach. All we have to do is live our lives the way it should be lived by loving others who are in need of God's love. Not difficult. It only takes letting Jesus illuminate every aspect of our lives to let God's grace bring light into our mind, into our decisions, into our actions, and allow it to light the path that he calls us to follow. When God lights our way, we can be sure that we're on the right path, going in the right direction, surrendering and offering ourselves to God who knows what's best. Today, as, as we approach the altar to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, and as we go from here to live our lives this week, let us offer ourselves to God. Let us renew our commitment that we made to Him and begin experiencing life in the way He intends. Let us be light to everyone that we come in contact with. Church 
that we will be a joyful light to all people through word and example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern the nations, that they will lead in a way pleasing to the King of glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in consecrated life, that they will continue serving the Lord with open hearts and willing spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to religious life, that men and women will respond to the Holy Spirit and serve in a special way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of this parish, that we will respond to the needs of others in gratitude for our blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or in pain, especially those, the ones we now lift up by name, that they will draw strength from Christ's suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Deacon Andy Berg and Cam Hebert, that they will sing the praises of God with the angels. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, we trust in your love and compassion. Hear our prayers spoken today and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. 
And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation. And with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us collect our prayer. <clears throat> By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May all of us be blessed today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and high. Thank you.